Hello and welcome to this video wherein I describe how you scrape data from an internet web page from within R. What do I mean by scraping? Well, it's frequently the case that when you're surfing the web you encounter uh, pages and sites that have information that you might like to download and further summarize or perhaps plot. As an example, I'm on the Wikipedia page which lists all the world's recognized countries, their populations. There's some more information on this page, such as the date when the estimate was prepared, the percent of world population that that country represents, as well as the source of the information. So here we have six columns. We have a table with six columns and 247 rows. As far as I can determine, this is the only table on this page. It's certainly the only information that I wish to pull at this point. So the question remains, how do we do this? If we tried to do this ourselves, we're actually going to have to write some fairly sophisticated code. So it's a good thing that R provides a package which will help us in this mission. It's the XML package. Now XML is all uppercase. It is an add-on package, which means that you must first install it. You'll have to install it in order for any of the examples in this code to work. So you might want to stop the video and do that and come back. Okay, so install the XML package. The next information that you're going to need is the URL of the web page that you're trying to fetch, that you're trying to scrape. So with that we can start working here. The function in the package XML that we need is called read HTML table. Now the function names, as, as you know, R is case sensitive. So you have to pay attention uh, to the case of this function call. In particular, this function, a lot of people misspell it. They, they have lowercase t where it's uppercase. And just be aware of that. So I will call the function. The first argument is the URL of the web page we're attempting to scrape. The second argument, in this case which, tells the function which table we're going to get. Since there is only one table, it will pull that table, the first and only table. So let's look at what happens. If I run this code, you see that what we get back looks pretty much like the table that we've been staring at. There's the rank, there's the country name, the population, the date uh, this information was collected, the percent, and then the source. Now, the names are a little less than ideal, but I, I could fix that. That's a minor problem. We can use just use the names function to name these columns anything that we want. But what I want to focus on right now is proving to you that this is a data frame and that R did a reasonable job of downloading it. So use the str function to reveal the underlying structure of what we just read in. And you'll see that it is a data frame that has 247 rows and six variables, six columns. So that's encouraging. It looks like we've got a data frame and it has some reasonable information in it. However, there are problems. You can see here that R has converted every column into a factor okay maybe this doesn't matter so much relative to the country name or the rank um, but the population in my opinion needs to be numeric as does the percent of world population at least those two variables need to be converted somehow so our first attempt at reading it was largely successful but we still have problems so you know a lot of people would read this in and then start trying to operate on it so let me let me just show you if I try to take the mean of this population variable, I get an error message because it's a character. <laughs> and if I show you the first five values of uh, the population vector, you see that it has commas in it. So the commas are at least part of the problem. Now I can easily get rid of those using the G sub function that will inspect each of these elements and remove any columns. So if I do this, you know, I'm proud of myself because I got rid of the commas and I, I try to take the mean. I still get an error. That's because the population variable is still a character variable. Okay. A way to fix that is to coerce it into a numeric variable. So I'll do that here. I'll take the mean of it. And you see that finally we get something meaningful back. Now, to be honest, I could have done this all in one go. 
what I'm showing you is how a newcomer would probably approach this problem. Now this can be tedious, okay? I could keep doing this. I could now turn my attention to the percent column and do the same kind of thing. I could even go to the date column and turn that into what's known as a POSIX date object. The thing is, is it becomes manual work and R provides a better way to do this. So let's check that one out. All right. The read HTML function supports an argument called call classes, C O L C L A S S E S, and it will take a vector, and that vector in turn specifies the desired format of the columns. So understand what this is doing. As read HTML table is reading this web page and extracting the table, it will attempt to convert each column to the respective um, uh, or the desired type specified in this vector. So I have a vector called classes here and there's six elements to it. Each of the columns, each of the elements corresponds to a column in the data frame that I'm going to read. So the first column will be integer, the second will be character, the third is formatted number. That tells R that the number probably has commas in it. The next column will be character, the, the percent column will be a percent this is a flag to R that says, by the way, this is a percent. Let's turn it into a numeric. And then the last column will be a character. All right, so the read HTML table call winds up being a little bit longer here. So let me show you what's happening. We have the URL, which we need. We have the which argument, which specifies the number of the table on the page we want. Now we have the call classes argument, which makes reference to this vector. Finally, I throw in the strings as factors argument. This, and I set it to, to false, because I don't want R to automatically turn character strings into factors. Okay, so if I run this version of the read HTML function, hopefully it will convert everything as desired, as it's reading it. Okay, and if we use our str function, you see that it's largely successful here. We have a data frame. Uh, the format of the rank column is an integer. The country name is a character. Population is numeric. The date still a character. We'll work on that in a second. And then finally, the source is a character. So I would rather do it this way and have R do the conversion on the fly as it's reading than first reading it in and then going back and doing conversions. That's up to you. You can take whatever approach you wish. Uh, it's not that one is right or wrong. I happen to think that this second version, the version that I just showed you, is a bit more optimal. Okay, that leaves us with one final problem. The date column is a character. In other words, it's, it's not a true date object. Programs like SAS and SPSS, uh, R, and basically any statistical package recognizes dates as a specific type. This allows us to filter data based on a date and a time if, if, if that's fully specified. Until we go to the trouble of telling R that what we have is a date, it will assume that it's just a character. Now what we would like to do is when we're reading in the table, we would like to take advantage of the call classes argument and specify that what we're reading in is a date. Unfortunately, dates can be specified in so many different ways there's no reasonable way to expect R to recognize the date, depending on what country you're from uh, or what the format of the study is. The dates could be fully specified. They could be all numeric. They could be a mixture of characters. In this case, if you look what we have, the dates are the fully written out month, the day of the month followed by a comma, and then the four-digit year. Some people might use a, an abbreviated month or they might list the year first, then the month, then the day. So we have to tell R, if we want to convert this to a date, we have to do it manually. In this case, it's easy. I use the strip time function, which is built into R. And what I need, the trick to using this function, is that I need to tell strip time what the date format is. That way it can decode it and turn it into a proper date object. Now the 
um, tokens that you see here, a token is prefixed by a percent. These have a special meaning to strip time. In this case, the big B says that the month name is coming first and that it's fully written out. Then there's a space and then there's a percent D which says the day of the month is here followed by a comma and then the uppercase Y is the fully specified year. So this winds up being, once you, once you tell strip time what the format is, it's really good about converting things nicely. And if you need more information on what these tokens are, just look at the help page for strip time. All right, so here I'll do the conversion. And you see that now this is a true date. Now, I can't really think of a reason to use it here. Uh, I'm just showing you how you might want to convert it. And just remember that you probably have to do this manually uh, because call classes doesn't support a way to, to specify it when you're reading uh, the data in. So that about wraps it up. There are a number of complicating factors that could occur. Uh, I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, there's too many to, to consider, but this should get you started and provide a pretty solid foundation for scraping stuff with the XML package.